Donald Trump's age and brain coming into stark relief over the last 96 hours. Last night at a speech in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, Donald Trump's brain collapsed multiple times on stage. And although it started as a joke, Republicans now are running the oldest presidential nominee in American history. This guy is declining and declining quickly. Donald Trump confusing Kamala Harris and Nikki Haley. Listen to this. And you know, they're talking about he was talking about she's talking about re lifting the retirement age. she's going to. have. So a totally confused. He's talking about she's talking about Kamala Harris is not talking about raising the retirement age. Nikki Haley was talking about raising the retirement age and Trump regularly gets confused. Was it Pelosi or Nikki Haley? Was it Kamala or Nikki Haley? Trump doesn't know what's going on. Trump also uh, struggling to speak instead of abortion using the word impotent, impotent and glitching and trying to recover. Lion Kamala is also a total. And by the way, of course, referring to her as Kamala rather than Kamala. Lion Kamala is also a total radical on a word called Imbo Do you know this, right? A word in button at, you know, this, right? You in button at, you know, this, right? On a word called in. Do you know this, right? A word called what? Abortion. She's a radical. The entire speech was a struggle for the failed former president. Trump again rehashing these stories of Hannibal Lecter. Uh, we actually may have gotten an explanation as to why Trump is obsessed with Hannibal Lecter. I'm going to tell you in a moment. Prisons and jails, mental institutions, and insane asylums. You know, they go crazy when I say the late great Hannibal Lecter. Okay, they say, why would he mention Hannibal Lecter? He must be cognitively in trouble. No, 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 these are real stories. Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lamb. He's a lovely man. He wants to have you for dinner. He'd like to have you for dinner. Okay, so here's the possible explanation. We've been trying to figure out why is Trump obsessed with Hannibal Lecter? Why does Trump seem to think Hannibal Lecter is a historical figure rather than a character from a movie? Here's the best we've been able to come up with so far. Trump seems to be confusing migrants seeking asylum and insane asylums. Th this may be what's going on in Trump's head. Trump is aware of the I guess the character Hannibal Lecter, who he might think is a historical figure, Hannibal Lecter in an insane asylum, which we might call a psychiatric institution. And then Trump hears about how there are people coming from south of the border seeking asylum. And Trump believes that they are coming from so-called insane asylums, which connects back to Hannibal Lecter. I know that what I'm saying is crazy. How could anyone believe that? It's the best explanation that we have so far, and it's not a great one, but at least it's something. And it shows you the deranged mind of this orange man. Trump also, uh, when referring to Kamala Harris, saying that Kamala Harris is against the Jewish people. What she's doing is she's running away from Israel. She refuses to go to Bibi Netanyahu, Yahoo is in Washington. Netanyahu. Even if you're against Israel or you're against the Jewish people, show up and listen to the concept. But she's totally against the Jewish people. And it amazes me how yeah. Jewish people will vote for the Democrats when they're being treated so disrespectfully and bad. Now, I will mention that not only did Kamala Harris not go to Bibi Netanyahu or Netanyahu, as he said, speech, uh, neither did J.D. Vance because they were both out on the campaign trail. Isn't it disrespectful for J.D.? J.D. Vance is running away from the Jewish people because he's a senator and he should, really should have been there for Bibi Netanyahu speech. This is idiotic. And of course, Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff, happens to be Jewish, happens to be Jewish uh, beyond satire and beyond parody. Donald Trump says that Kamala Harris shouldn't even be allowed to run because she has committed crimes. And she shouldn't even be allowed to run for president. What she's done, she's committing crimes. Now, of course, Trump is a convicted felon. If Kamala Harris shouldn't be allowed to run for the supposed crimes that she is allegedly committing, 
none of which he's enumerated, none of which he's been indicted for, never mind convicted. If that's the case, certainly applying even any reasonable standard, Trump should not be allowed to run because he was convicted on 34 felony counts. Oh, no, that's different. One of the funniest things Trump does is pretend that he reads and he's been pretending that he's read J.D. Vance's book, Hillbilly Elegy, which I did read, by the way. Uh, it's an OK book. It's not bad. Uh, of course, J.D. Vance has abandoned everything he espouses in the book, but that's a different story. It's so funny because every time Trump talks about J.D.'s book, it's obvious he hasn't read it and nobody seems to be correcting him. under Trump Vance administration. And he's terrific, by the way, he's been incredible. You know, he wrote the great book on workers about how workers were being horribly taken advantage of, became a movie, big best selling book, became a, a great movie, actually. And he's a great guy. Yeah, the hillbilly elegy is not really about how workers were being taken advantage of at all. It's about J.D. Vance's family upbringing, his education, going to the Marines, meeting his wife, his mama uh, and uh, being raised mostly by his grandmother. And yeah, I mean, I guess generically, to some degree, the fact that there aren't a lot of great jobs in certain parts of the country is part of the book. But you can really tell every time Trump opens his mouth about this, he has no idea what is in J.D. Vance's book. And then finally, as the confusion continues to be visible on Trump's face, Trump gets the timing of his RNC RNC speech completely wrong. People like it. People like it. She looked good two weeks ago coming into that arena, right? Melania. Yeah. That was six days ago that Trump delivered the RNC speech six days ago as of last night, not two weeks ago. And Trump's just completely disoriented. So the, the real question we land on, and I think it's a question there is no answer to. And at the same time, the answer to is obvious. How did the concern about age all of a sudden go away with Joe Biden exiting the race? given Donald Trump's obvious age related decline and the fact that he doesn't know how much time is passing. He doesn't seem to know who he's running against. He's regularly confusing Nikki Haley with all sorts of other people. And yet we are supposed to believe that there are no concerns anymore. Well, the problem for Trump is that no matter whether the topic of age and cognition is an overt topic of discussion, the contrast with the very high energy, didactic and uh, um, uh, high energy Kamala Harris couldn't possibly be more stark. And if they debate, it will be very, very obvious. So my question to you, will Trump debate Kamala Harris? I know he said he would. I know he said he would. Will Trump ultimately debate Kamala Harris or is it too big a risk? Let me know. Info at David Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're signed up for a membership at joinpacman.com. In today's insane media landscape to stay informed and prepare for the show, I turn to trustworthy publications of record like The Washington Post. No one can beat The Washington Post's track record of investigative journalism and speaking truth to power. And now The Washington Post is a sponsor of The David Pakman Show. Did you know the post offers a cool feature for audio lovers like you? You can actually listen to articles in addition to reading them so you can tackle your to do list and catch up on the news at the same time. And if you thought The Washington Post only covered politics, think again. You name it, they cover it. Climate and culture, crosswords and cooking. The Washington Post helps you discover a world of surprising stories, important insights and actionable advice. It's important to me that this show only be sponsored by a reputable news organization like The Washington Post, and my audience needs to stay informed. You really need a daily newspaper to read online to do that. From May 21st to June 3rd, my audience can subscribe for just 25 cents per week for their first year. That's 90% off their typical offer. Go to WashingtonPost.com slash Pacman. And after June 3, they still have a great deal for you at 50 cents a week. The link is in the description.